It started with a 3D printer and a Raspberry Pi, and ended with an icon of tech history. My guest today has brought along a friend who likes to ask questions such as, it looks like you're writing a letter, how can I help? Let's get personal computing with David Pakman. Welcome. Welcome to Microsoft Reactor. Oh, thanks for having me here. And you brought a friend with you, I notice. A friend. Now, this friend has been part of tech geek culture for a while. Somebody who, when, it, when, when they first were released on the, on the tech scene, weren't exactly very helpful, would randomly pop up and say, I think you're writing a letter. But you've got a clippy that's actually more helpful. Yes, I... Certainly hope it is. At least it's more entertaining than the little clippy popping up on front of your Word document. I mean, that, that was part of classic culture, wasn't it? Everyone was laughing at just this AI assistant, which in its day mm -hmm. was incredibly powerful, just not quite powerful enough. But what you've got is leveraging the fact there's more power. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, now that we've made some advances in AI, it actually has more brains to it. Oh, it's a clippy with brains. I like yeah. the sound of this. Can we see Clippy in action? Show me Clippy in action. Hey, Clippy. How can Are, I help? Is Clippy related to ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a natural language processing, NLP, model developed by Microsoft that enables developers to create interactive AI-based chatbots. It utilizes a transformer-based architecture and pre-trained GPT-2 model to generate natural language responses to user input. The model is designed to enable developers to quickly create custom conversational AI experiences with minimal effort. Now, that is a lot better than, it looks like you're writing a letter. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really cool. OK, so you said, hey, Clippy, and it went mm -hmm. up. How can I help? What is Clippy? Clippy is a Microsoft Office Assistant that was introduced in Office 97. It was an animated paperclip character that would offer help and advice to users as they worked with various Office applications. Clippy has since been retired and replaced by other Office assistants. Okay, so Clippy 97, we're mm. now 2023. Yeah. So that's 26 years ago. Yeah. So that is kind of an important part of, I guess, the culture for the older generation of, of tech folks. But <laughs> this is the same thing, just advanced. 20, 26 years. Yeah, and causing much more of a stir than Clippy did back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how does Clippy work? Is Clippy like chat GPT in a box? How, what's the magic behind all this? So yeah, it basically is a chat GTP in a box uh, using Azure Speech Services. Um, it basically gets the, what you tell it, sends that to chat GPT and you get the result. Okay, so we ask it a question. Uh, use the speech services to go from our voice to text. Mm -hmm. Sends that over to ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. ChatGPT comes up with an answer, mm -hmm. sends it back, yep. and then speech services converts it back to speech, mm -hmm. and out it comes. Yeah. And the eyebrows wiggle. And the eyebrows, <laughs> the right. eyebrows wiggle as well. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but why? <laughs> why? <laughs> what inspired you to take this 26-year-old annoying little assistant and build this cool device that leverages modern AI? Why? why? So I, um, I actually build a lot of different robots mm -hmm. uh, as a hobby. And I like to call them personal robots or right. basically companion bots, right? So they're there to keep you company well being useful sometimes. Um, and when I, you know, when ChatGTP started gave, gaining a lot of prominence, I was like, oh, I could really leverage this to make the bots even more personable and give them more character and actually make them more useful. Uh, so I, I sat and thought, hey, what robot could I add this to first? I, so many I could choose from. I saw all the memes online about, hey, you know, is, is chat GPT actually clippy? Mm -hmm. How can I help? <laughs> Are you the same as chat GPT? No, we are not the same as ChatGPT. <laughs> so the there memes say it is. ChatGPT yeah. is basically Clippy under the, under the hood, but Clippy says no. 
No. Though I did ask it one time if it worked with uh, ChatGPT, and it said that uh, no, because Clippy was retired. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just great because, I mean, it's amazing how much personality is actually in the large language models that uh, ChatGPT is leveraging. Because it's basically picking up so much information that was put across the internet. Mm -hmm. Some of that's going to be personal information, it's going to be stories, and that kind of, as you say, comes into kind of a personality. Yeah. And if you're building these, um, sort of personal robots, social robots, mm -hmm. having some kind of personality there kind of helps. Definitely. I mean, at some point, there are going to be fewer workers than there are people that are retired and maybe need more help around the house or things like that. And, you know, we in the U.S. tend to have a little bit of a shyness about adopting robots. They've never really gained ground like they have in some other countries. So you really need some sort of crux to sort of shift that so that you know, robots are more appealing, they're less threatening. Okay, so I'm, I'm intrigued now. Hey, Clippy. How why, can I help? Why are robots seen as threatening? Robots are increasingly becoming a part of our daily lives, and as okay. technology advances, so does the potential for robots to be seen as threatening. For some people, the idea of robots taking over human jobs or being used in military operations can be unsettling and cause fear. Additionally, films and other media have often presented robots in a negative light, causing people to view them with suspicion and mistrust. As robots become more integrated into our lives, it is important to remember the potential benefits they can. Okay, the potential benefits they can. Clippy stopped halfway through a sentence. <laughs> How come? <clears throat> so. Using ChatGPT and Azure Voice services or speech services isn't necessarily free. There are some free tiers that you can use, but there's limitations on how many phrases it'll utter. Uh, um, and you know, a Chat GPT model that I'm using, the DaVinci model, which is the, the more current one, um, costs about 20 cents per like 1,000 syllables, basically. Okay. So. That doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, if you have a lot of conversations all day with Clippy, which who wouldn't? I mean, you would, wouldn't you? Of course, you would. It, yeah. it could cost a little bit. It costs a little bit. Okay, so if I asked it to repeat like the entirety of Dante's Inferno, for example, that could cost you an absolute fortune. Yeah, but fortunately, there there are parameters that we can put in there, and it says oh, only use so many utterances and cut it off at a certain point. Which, okay, so you can get it to think? be very kind of terse. So just give me a little bit. Hence, why it stopped at they can. Mm -hmm. Okay, you talk about this idea of accepting robots into their house. Other countries do this. So how do you see these robots being used in the house? What, what, do, you, what do you think is you, would, you would do with this in your, your next robot? You know, this is your experiment. Mm -hmm. How would you put this in your next robot? So one of the, the other robots I'm working on is called Whiskers. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a, a lucky cat. So it's paws sort of sitting up all the time. The waving cat thing, yes. Exactly. Yeah. So it's always sitting on the countertop ready to help you. It has machine vision and, uh, of course, uh, speech recognition. So it also has a whisk on its one little hand, so it will trundle up on up to a bowl and sort of move it down and mix your ingredients for you. Hence the name Whiskers. Exactly. Ah, clever. Cat Whisk. <laughs> so some of the other functionality I really want to add on to it wouldn't be possible without something like ChatGPT, right? So now we can go ahead and have Whiskers answer a question about, you know, what can I make with these ingredients? Can you give me your recipe? And, and, and it can actually walk you through that step by step, both verbally and on a screen. Because, you know, when you're mixing things and dealing with hot ingredients, you probably don't want to look at the screen. So it's actually going to verbally talk, walk you through it, right? Right. Okay. Uh, and some of the other things it can do is uh, we can train the vision model to recognize certain ingredients, right? And catalog them. So you can show it those ingredients and say, hey, what can I make with these? which would be really useful for somebody maybe with vision impairments and they maybe can't see what spices they have. So now I can actually tell you, both through the vision model and through uh, the large language model. Nice, nice. You actually get something out. You get like a, you, know, you pick up a herb, for mm -hmm. example. You're shaking it, it sounds like a herb, but you say, go to vision impairment, you're not sure which herb it is. Yeah. And then you can just hold that in front of Whiskers mm -hmm. and Whiskers will say, oh, that's time. Yeah. And then, so let's try this out. Yeah. Hey, Clippy. How can I help? Give me a recipe using the herb thyme. Lemon thyme roasted chicken. Ingredients. 
one whole chicken, two tablespoons olive oil, two lemons sliced, four sprigs of fresh thyme, salt and pepper to taste. Mm. Instructions. One, preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Two, rinse the chicken and pat it dry. Three, place the chicken in a baking dish. So there's other parameters you can actually Four, give it so it'll actually olive. step through one line at a time, right? And wait for another phrase or prompting in order to take you to the next step. Okay, so that way you've, you're not, because I know with some of these you can ask your whatever device at home, what's a recipe and it will just tell you. Mm -hmm. But that's no use because your cooking is not, you give the information, I retain it all and then cook. Mm -hmm. You want that step by step. Yeah. Especially when, I mean, you're making multiple dishes at the same time, you're distracted. You know, I'm not going to want to like hold a hot pot and then try to look over at my recipe again while I'm cooking something. So something like this would free you up from having to, you know, distract you and move your attention away from what you're actually doing, right? Nice. So actually, really, it's not just like a, a fun toy. This is you experimenting with unlocking the power of these models mm -hmm. and think about what are the real world use cases. You're walking with this so whiskers can run. Exactly. Almost. Okay. But it's even beyond even robots that have useful functionality, or at least a, a, you know, apparently useful functionality. <laughs> Um, you know, having a companion robot is really useful for people that are you know, shut inside, um, you know, that may not be able to get out of bed or have social anxiety issues. Um, I have a son on a spectrum and, and these sort of help him socialize when he doesn't have as many friends to uh, talk to. So basically I'm making robot friends. As you say, that, that companion robot, that social robot can be very important for, for people. Yeah, especially um, like when I'm going to get... When, well, I'm already old, but when I get older, <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to place a burden on my children. So I definitely want to have a robot around to help take care of me and give me that functionality that I might lose as I grow older, right? Yeah. Um, and I definitely want it to have a personality. Yeah, you want it to be fun. You want it to. You don't want it to just be because I mean, you, you look at like the smart speakers you get. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a, a dome or a round mm -hmm. thing and that's it there's nothing the personality might be some lights that go on but yeah. this i mean if, if we ask us something the eyebrows go up and down so hey clippy how can i help why are clippy's eyebrows so cool i, mean, I love it the way they just go up and It'd down and talk. clip pies are small plastic clips that are designed <laughs> to help for styling and shaping eyebrows <clears throat> So there are some things we can do to improve the accuracy of the voice model so it, it more accurately catches what you're saying to it. I mean, one is, of course, using a better microphone. That's not a very expensive one in there. Um, but there's also software settings on the side that we can make sure that it's a little bit more accurate for the training. So the microphone is it's here at the, the front, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So where we're, obviously we're sitting behind it, the microphone's not picking us up clearly. Yes. And that last thing, it recognized they are Clippy's eyebrows so cool, <laughs> which is not quite what I said. Uh, so again, I guess think about as this goes to a wider robot, it's do I have a beam microphone where I've got a better, some kind of microphone mm. array that picks it up uh, a bit better. I mean, this, this whole setup is very, very cool. The hardware is very cool and it looks 3D printed. Yes. So in terms of the case, the Clippy itself, you designed and printed all mm -hmm. this? Yeah, I modeled it in CAD and um, and uh, just sliced it and uh, printed it on. I have like a small garden of printers. Um, but basically, I, I think I printed these on uh, three of my Prusa printers. So. Okay, so it's just anyone at home with a 3D printer or has got access to a maker space, yeah. uh, they could then print something like this. Mm -hmm. So you've got, let's say, 3D printed the, the clip, the eyes, the eyebrows, the, the whole case. Mm -hmm. Very cool effects. I'm liking the, the purple we've got there. Uh, and then in terms of the hardware here, obviously we've got some kind of servo moving mm -hmm. the eyebrows up and down. Yeah. There's obviously a screen so you can see what's going on. But what's the magic inside? What's the actual hardware magic? How, oh. how, how does it work? I'm glad you asked. Can we even go open ahead it? and take Clippy apart here? Oh, sorry, Do a little Clippy. open Clippy operation. <laughs> oh, sorry. First, we have to take this little microphone out. Okay. Sorry, also, it's a USB microphone just on mm -hmm. the front there. Okay, mm -hmm. and then this is the inside of Clippy. This is the kind of thing you, you would never imagine you see when you're far Office 97. You're going to get it's a <laughs> disembowel Clippy. Exactly. Okay, so that looks like a Raspberry Pi, if I'm not mistaken. It's a Raspberry Pi with an Adafruit Cricket hat. 
Okay. So the Adafruit Cricket Hat gives it a lot of functionality, including the ability to control servo motors, um, speaker, uh, touch sensitivity, uh, any number of different types of motors. Just name it. it. It really is a really neat piece of hardware when you combine it with the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so the Pi is obviously the, the brains behind everything. Mm -hmm. That Cricket Hat's just got all the nice connections, so we can power the eyebrows going up and down. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the screen. That's that's just the HDMI screen, but then we've got the speaker, a directional USB connection there to the mm -hmm. hole in the front in the case exactly. to put the microphone. So you've got an external microphone. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, as you, if you were to expand this, you could put like a beam array along the front, whatever mm -hmm. you wanted to do to get a better microphone. Mm -hmm. And that's, so that's quite a simplistic set of hardware. It is. It is. It, it, I designed it so that anybody could really build one. Mm. Assuming you can get a Raspberry Pi, of course. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, the previous iteration I had with this one actually used a Libre Lip Potato, uh, which is a, a, a Raspberry Pi like SBC or right. single board computer yeah. that has the same dimensions as a Raspberry Pi, but it's a little bit more powerful. Right. Okay. But if it could fit in the same spot. And it only costs $45 versus the couple of hundred that you pay for Raspberry Pis now in the black market, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're not cheap with the supply constraint. Yeah. Supply chain constraints. Awesome. This is really cool. And so you say no one could build this. Have you made this information available to people? Is it, it is it available to download the the STL files and all the software? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be on Hackster.io. Awesome. So we'll make sure there's a link in the show notes for for Hackster awesome. so for people to build this. Uh, but otherwise, thank you very much for for joining. Thank you, Clippy. Uh, I'm sorry we had to disembowel you uh, live on camera. But no, <laughs> thank you very much for coming and showing me Clippy today. Thanks for having me. Again, as cool as this project is, what's even cooler is you can recreate this at home. Check out the link below for everything you need.